So some Christians who maybe are listening into this and you're hearing about coming together for Holy Book dialogues or coming together for joint service projects and various things like that may say, these are just Christian liberals talking here that just want to bring together and uh, they're kind of just, uh, uh, you know, promoting peace, but really almost in a universalistic way that uh, they don't really believe uh, in the, the centrality of the gospel message and our distinctives as Christians, that we have a message to share. And it's just too uh, resisting to let it pass by. And I, I just want to, just briefly, Nathan, maybe you could just respond to that. Why, um, or, or it, it really any of you, and then I want to come back with Pastor uh, Paul to let him share a little more, but um, just to address that a little bit. Yeah, um, I'll give it a shot at the beginning. Um, Paul mentioned um, the Great Commission at the beginning, um, which is a, a very obligatory thing if you're going to be any sort of range of evangelical Christian, is to believe in this, this mission and this commission. Um, and uh, what, um, what some of us at, at Peace Catalyst like to say and others interacted with is just because there is a Great Commission that doesn't invalidate the Great Commandments. And so, um, in fact, uh, I would argue that the Great Commandments, which is love of God and love of neighbor, is the proper context for Great Commission. So, all this to say, um, I don't think that we have to put something like Christian witness and Christian peacemaking in different categories. I think Christian witness, peacemaking is a Christian witness, uh, by the way, especially if it's centered in Jesus. But I think Christian witness and Christian peacemaking in, our, in context with our, our Muslim friends are um, different dimensions of the gospel, of working out what, it, what the good news of Jesus is. So I resist this caricature that peacemaking is this thing that perhaps liberal Protestants do or um, liberal Catholics do and we get to these labels, I think that um, peacemaking and witness can be conjoined and should be properly conjoined in a vision of a gospel tied to Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So I resonate exactly with what you just said, but let me push a little further. I hear the voice of some of my Christian friends speaking into this ear right now, saying, but what about the truth? The truth sometimes hurts and it causes you know, conflict. Are these people compromising uh, the truth? Um, and uh, so, I don't know, Dave or, or Nathan, just continue along. How would you respond to this, this uh, resistance back? Well, maybe I'll, I'll just, uh, if I could just jump in. Uh, well, we don't compromise the truth. Uh, the truth will stand for itself. Now, uh, we, we need to uh, defend the gospel, yes, but the gospel will speak for itself. And uh, we, we don't, I don't see a, 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 a conflict between having uh, a positive relationships with Muslims and uh, in speaking the gospel. Uh, in fact, uh, the Apostle Paul said uh, in, in Romans chapter 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. So, in um, fact, uh, often when I meet a Muslim, the first thing I will do is tell them I'm a believer in Jesus, and I will offer them in some way the gospel. Why? Because I think to a Muslim's mind, if you have something which is so important to you and you never talk about it, that seems kind of strange. So I think we as believers, if, if the gospel is so important to us, that we should, then we should be willing to present it, offer it, not kind of hide it and keep it uh, tucked away somewhere. If we don't do that, then they might think that's very strange. And I, you know, just something I would add, you know, as I've thought about distinctive Christian doctrine and Christian truth, the truth that we believe, um, you know, even the doctrine of the incarnation of God coming in the flesh, which many of our Muslim friends would have a, a, a problem with their understanding of the Christian uh, doctrine of the incarnation of, of God in, in Jesus. But even as that's laid out in Scripture, um, you know, there are two ways that you can approach that kind of conversation with a Muslim. You could get into head, a head uh, clash and debate over that. But what Scripture really admonishes Christians to do is to live it. 
In other words, the model of the incarnation of what we believe, the way Jesus came, Jesus came in humility, Jesus came in love, Jesus came to serve. Well, the way I understand what the New Testament teaches is we are to embody that. So it isn't so much about having a, a debate or a conversation. We won't shy away from having that conversation. But the first thing is that we are actually living that. We are following the model of Jesus in coming in the flesh to our friends and uh, modeling a humble servant heart, an approach of love. And then in the context of that, in due time, we may actually have conversation about doctrine. But I think the first thing is that we actually are living the doctrine. So Nathan, I don't know if you have anything to add, and then I'm going to go to Pastor Paul. No, that's great. And uh, you're, the way that you're saying it there, um, I, I resonate with. Um, I, I don't think um, um, our commitment to Christ um, and um, even to the authority of, of, of Christ as the... Um, is what we believe as Christians is the uh, most exhaustive revelation of God for the sake of humanity. Um, I don't think that, that our, you know, you can't be committed to Christ and to Jesus and then not be in line with the motives and manners of Jesus. So, um, I, and I think this is what we need to look at more as evangelical Christians in America in particular, uh, but perhaps as evangelicals worldwide, is... is um, it is all well and good to blow a lot of hot air and smoke about about um, truth, and it's very very true. Um, um, and we want to be um, in line with what the good news of Jesus is, and and we don't want to be ashamed of that. Hmm. But um, that still means that we, if we look at Jesus' pattern, especially as his pattern for interacting with Samaritans in particular, or the religious other in particular. Um, we, we must embody the motives and manners of, of, of this. So I think being committed to Jesus also means that they shouldn't be bifurcated. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. Now again, I'm hearing in my ear, I'm hearing, but Jesus was, Jesus was not afraid about uh, ruffling the feathers and, and sometimes is speaking the truth, it was, it was hard. Um, so I'm just pushing a little bit more. One, one, this is great. One, um, one thing that, that I think um, um, we should return to with this conversation, that's true about Jesus. However, if you look at most instances, they are with his own religious community. They are not with the religious other. It is not the pattern for how Jesus interacted with the religious other. That's the pattern for some time, for sometimes how Jesus interacted with his own religious community. I think that's very fascinating.